Hello, good evening. We are in session number three of this last week. So we're going to... So we are going to continue with the topics that we have for uh, this week. That is one. And we are going to talk about um, a specific topic. In this case, we are going to create a vocabulary. Um, we are going to have like different parts in this session because we are going to have like um, a vocabulary in which we are going to create like groups of words related with uh, the topic, the, the main topic that we have for today. Then we are going to talk about how to create something. But I'm not going to tell you um, what is this uh, part because we are going to do it like um, part by part. So in that case, uh, we are going to have um, the steps to create something. Also, we are going to talk about adjectives and uh, related words to the adjective because we're going to see another word that we can use for that um, adjective that is talking about something in specific. So we are going to have three different parts in this session. So we're going to start sharing the screen in which we are going to see what is the topic for today's session that is almost, almost, almost the end. So for today, we have the topic events. We are going to talk about events and you know that in this case, we can uh, talk about um, different kind of events in which we can have like a celebration or something like that. So we are going to create a list of events or a celebration or something like that. And then we are going to create groups of words related to each event. Vamos a hablar de eventos. Eh, vamos a tener tres partes hoy. Donde vamos a hablar de eh, eventos especiales, eh, celebraciones, something like that. Vamos a hacer una lista de estos eventos, esas celebraciones o esos eh, momentos especiales del año. And then we are going to create groups of words that we can use for each of them. Y luego crearemos el vocabulario, ¿verdad? De palabras que se relacionan con este evento, esta celebración o esta situación. So, we are going to begin saying this one or writing this one. Holidays and a special event. Vocabulary. And it says that there are uh, a lot of words associated with holidays in general. It's here, vocabulary about different holidays um, compared to significant words which were useful and valuable when you are um, studying English. So remember that uh, we are in a process. And in this case, um, we need to create the, this kind of situation in which we have a lot of vocabulary, a lot of words that we can use when we are talking uh, in English and saying a specific information about events. Uh, we were talking about different vocabulary through this course. Uh, we were talking about feelings. We were talking about words that we can use to describe houses. Uh, we were talking about adjectives and all of that things. So, we know that it's very, very important to um, have this kind of vocabulary because it's, it's going to be better for us when we are writing or when we are reading or when we are talking. So it is very, very necessary to have this vocabulary. So in this uh, list that we are going to see right now, we have the name of the, uh, the, name of the holiday. 
And also, we are going to have more words that we can use for each holiday. So that is the first part, because we are going to have three parts in this session. So let's begin. Name of holidays, that is the first part. It says when it comes to time to celebrate, you will need to be able to discuss the names of holidays in English. So we are going to see the different or the most common celebrations, because in that case, um, in different countries, they don't have the same celebration as us. In this case, it's like the most common. So, some of these holidays are celebrated all over the world, while others are like honored only in the specific nation. In this part, you will be able to expand your vocabulary even further to learning the English names uh, for range of holidays and festivals. And if we have like 15 words that we're going to see. So we're going to see what is the list that we have for the uh, holidays first. Vamos a ver primero solo la lista de los holidays y luego las palabras que se relacionan con estos holidays. So there are many of them are very, very common. We have birthday. We have April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day, that is not like celebrated here in, in that time. We have Christmas, Father's Day, Easter, that again, is, Easter is not like Celebrated here in the country, but um, in these years, uh, people like to do something uh, related to Easter here in El Salvador, but it is not like very, very common. Then we have Halloween, that uh, this one is another international celebration that uh, people like to do some uh, parties and some some events when it's Halloween. International Women's Day. Mother's Day. Lover Day. New Year's Eve. Again, this one is not a celebrator here, but we know this word. That is Thanksgiving. Summer vacation. Valentine's Day. International Children's Day, and wedding. So here we have a, a short list of celebrations or holidays or events that we celebrate. And uh, we know that there are a lot of words, a lot of celebration, but in this case, we have this short list. We have the birthday, we have Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day, we have Halloween, International Women's Day, uh, Labor Day, New Year Eve, um, uh, vacations, Valentine's Day, International Children's Day, and we have weddings. In that case, there are the general words that we can use to call the different events. And now we are going to use some of these uh, holidays to create a, another kind of vocabulary in which we are going to see what are the words that are related to that celebration. 
Vamos a hacer eh, unas pequeñas listas donde vamos a tener palabras que se utilizan según, ¿verdad?, la celebración que tenemos. Así que son palabras relacionadas a la celebración. The first one is birthday vocabulary. Birthday vocabulary. And we have some words that are related to this celebration. We have the first one, balloon. Birthday card. Birthday hat. Birthday cake. Biscuit. Candy. Chocolate. Ice cream. Candle. Fruit. Confetti. Gift. Clown. Popcorn. Cupcake. French fries. So in this case, we have some words that we can use for this celebration. Aquí tenemos algunas palabras, ¿verdad? Que utilizamos para lo que es el, el, los cumpleaños. We have balloon, that are in Spanish, globos. Birthday card, que es la invitación, ¿verdad? A, las, a los cumpleaños. Birthday hat, que es el sombrero, ¿verdad? Que se le pone al cumpleañero. Birthday cake, que es el pastel de cumpleaños. Biscuits, que son las galletas. Candy, dulces, chocolate, chocolate, ice cream, es el helado o sorbete, como se le conoce. Candles, que son las velas. Fruit, la fruta, confetti. Eh, los regalos, clown, payaso, popcorn, que son las palomitas de maíz. Cupcake, que son los, eh, uh, los panquecitos, ¿verdad? And French fries, que son las papas fritas. And we know that there are more words that we can use for Christmas, uh, I mean, for birthday celebrations. But in this case, we're going to have this short list of words because we are going to talk about the other celebrations. And we have the next one that is Christmas vocabulary. And we have candy cane, bell, candle, gift, girlman, light. Candy, gingerbread man, Christmas tree, Santa's hand. Fire 
third place. Gingerbread House. Santa Claus. Eels. The Snowman. Santa Sad. Christmas card. The snowflake. Good. So in this case, we have like very specific words. And maybe there are some words or some things that we don't use here in our country. But when we're talking about decoration, we can use a snowflake, we can use uh, the Santa Sack, a snowman, because we know that here we don't have like a snow. But as a decoration, we can do something like that. Uh, also, we can use elf, we can use the gingerbread house that are very um, summer right now in, in the I mean, in a couple of years, uh, it, it's like very, very common to see this kind of uh, gingerbread house, like to eat in in the in the celebration. Also, we can have the uh, gingerbread men that are like cookies, um, candies, like gold, breast, gift, candle, and all of that things. So they are like for decoration purpose only. En nuestro país es muy común, pero que nosotros eh, tengamos como el fireplace, que es la chimenea o lugar donde ponemos el fuego, la fogata, eh, porque se hace de otras maneras acá, ¿verdad? Pero para decoración sí podemos utilizar los elfos, el Santa Claus, eh, el hombre de, de nieve, eh, todo ese tipo de cosas que tienen que ver ¿verdad? con el frío y cosas así, porque acá no es, no es de esa manera. Pero para decoración nosotros lo podemos utilizar. For Easter, in this case, Easter is not like, um, like a very common celebration here in our country, but in some places, eh, people like to do some celebration like that because there are it, like using the eggs of chocolate, uh, the bunnies decoration, um, really sweet the colors, and they play with the kids uh, to find uh, the eggs. So in some places like to celebrate Easter, but um, in other countries are very, very common in uh, this celebration. And in this one, we have the following words. We have the Bible, candy, Easter egg, Easter bunny, Easter basket, Chocolate, crucifixion, resurrection, I mean, it is not in Spanish. Frost, lamb, and a toilet. 
So in our country is uh, this hey, we have a more most of this it works here because uh, we are talking about the time in which we are making a um, reflection of uh, the life of Jesus Christ. But in this case, it's not like we use the, the bunnies and all of that uh, things here. We have eggs, but they are kind of different because they are not like full of chocolate. They are full of uh, paper inside and it it has a different purpose that that egg that we have here in El Salvador but in other countries they like to use these um, candies or something sweet because that is the purpose of the celebration there to find those eggs and, and it is something lucky and 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 funny so in that case uh, we have some words that uh, we can use for the celebration. We have Bible, que es la Biblia, candy, dulces, el Easter egg, que son los, los huevos de Pascua, el Easter bunny, que es el, el conejo de Pascua, el Easter basket, que es la, la canasta donde se recolectan los huevos, eh, chocolate, que es como el material más utilizado, el chocolate, the fiction, que es la crucifixión, porque se trata sobre esa celebración. Resurrección, La cruz, eh, tenemos a las ovejas, cosas así, y los tulipanes. That is like um, a signal, a specific signal of that celebration. Then we have a Halloween. That is another celebration that is not uh, very, very common here, but people like to celebrate something kind of Halloween here. And for Halloween, we have bats, son los murciélagos, black cats, los gatos negros, the devil, that is the, the idea of Halloween, the devil. Mommy, haunted houses, cemetery. Goes. Jack o' Lantern. There are the um these uh, lamps that are making with So, esto, esto es lámparas que se hacen con las calabazas que se le ponen diferentes caras. Cauldron. Costume. Witch. Witch has. Candy. Owl, school, Samson, Witch Broom, the Spider Web, the Skeleton. And a spider. So in this case, it's related to this kind of animals uh, or insects or something like that that are kind of disgusting and also that has this mysterious um, feeling when we are like talking about this celebration because it is something dark and terrifying and something like that. Then we have the New Year's um, vocabulary. We're going to have the New Year's uh, Eve vocabulary, the summer vocabulary, and wedding vocabulary. We're going to have 
Valentine's Day. So we are going to have four more vocabulary. Solo vamos a tener cuatro más y luego pasamos a la explicación de cómo hablar o cómo crear eh, la explicación sobre los eventos cuando nosotros necesitamos hablar de los eventos. So here we are, the, we are going to talk about New Year's Eve vocabulary. We have fireworks, countdown, party hat, champagne, confetti, mask. Balloon, and a postcard. And we can add great because it's like uh, very common in this kind of celebration. Then we have the summer vocabulary. Many people really, really like the, the summer. So this is like the, the best part of the year for them because they like to go to the beach, uh, have these hours in, 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 in the ocean and something like that. So this is very, very funny. And here we have a sun that is the main element in this vocabulary, beach ball. Coconut palm, this, San Costo, it's towel, bikini. Dream trunk, visitor, beach umbrella, coconut, hot. Float, sunglasses, sun cream, pool, swimsuit, surf board, and seafood. That is very important for uh, people that like to eat seafood when they uh, uh, go to the beach, they like to eat that kind of food, fish, shrimps, and all of the things. Then we have wedding and marriage. Vocabulary. That is almost the end. We have the church for the people that uh, have this kind of um, religious uh, ceremony. Wedding bell. Campaign. Bouquet. Honeymoon, wedding cake, 
engagement ring. Veil, wedding dress, bride, groom, el novio y la novia, bridesmaid, best man. Highest oil minister, musician, and flower girl. And the last part of this vocabulary is the Valentine's Day. Then we're going to talk about another thing that is not. Um, like a vocabulary, but it is an explanation. And for Valentine's Day, we have lover, Cupid, arrow, Chocolate, teddy bear, gift, perfume, candy balloon, car, ring. So there we have the vocabulary in which we can, um, or the words that we can use for each celebration. In this case, we are not talking about um, all of the celebration or all the holidays that we have in the list, but we are making this a uh, vocabulary very general uh, because we can find uh, more words that we can use in this uh, situation. And it says, for example, in the case of birthday, we can say that the birthday is the literal or symbolic anniversary of a person or institution's birth. People's birthday are commemorated in a variety of cultures with birthday presents, cards, a celebration, or a rite or passage. And we have an example. Tara's birthday falls on a Sunday this year, which is unusual for her. So, in este caso, estamos hablando, ¿verdad?, de que la celebración del cumpleaños es literalmente o de una manera simbólica el aniversario de una persona o de una institución. Eh, son conmemorados los cumpleaños, ¿verdad?, en muchas culturas con lo que son regalos, eh, tarjetas, celebraciones or un ritual in other uh, countries. Then for April Fool Day, we have that often known as April Fool Day is an annual tradition on April 1st that involves practical pranks and hopes. Jokers frequently reveal their deception by yelling April Fools at the target. These pranks might include the mass media, which will be exposed the next day. In our country, it's not like in April, but we make like uh, jokes in, in some cases in a specific date. And in this case, uh, people are using uh, social media to make like jokes. And in some cases, there are like not good ones because people tend to think about that something better has happened and it is not like, um, very good to know that it was just a joke. And we have an example. April Fool's Day is also one of the shortest holidays of the year, lasting only a few hours. 
in this case, it's just like one day. So it is not like very, very long, like with um, a Valentine's Day, that is just one day, but it's like more relevant than April Fool's Day. Then we have Christmas, that is an annual holiday honoring the birth of Jesus Christ, celebrated by billions of people throughout the world, and they are celebrated on December 25 as a religious and cultural event. As an example, we have our Jew returning home for the holidays. Then for the Father's Day, we have Father's Day is a celebration that celebrates fraternity paternal ties and the impact of that on society. And we have the example on Father's Day, I will make a phone call to my father. Then we have the Easter that is also known as Pasqua, Static or Resurrection Sunday. It is a Christian celebration and cultural event honoring Jesus' resurrection from the dead which the New Testament describe as taking place on the third day after the execution by the Romans in at Calvary in uh, the moment that Jesus has this, uh, this situation. And the example said, they always attend church throughout the Easter season. Then we have Halloween, that also known as Al Halloween, Al Hallows Eve, or Al Saints Eve. It's a worldwide festival held on the Eve Feast of All Hallows Day on October 31st of the Western Christian. And the example said, I once wore a dress to a Halloween party, and it was really comfortable. Then we have the International Women's Day, that it said it is a global celebration commemorating women's cultural, political, and economic achievements. It is observed yearly on March 8th. It is also a key point in the women's right movement, raising awareness about problems like gender equality, reproductive, um, uh, reproductive rights and abuse and violence against women. And the example says, the day before International Women's Day, her husband surprised her with a bouquet of lovely flowers. Hmm. Fine enough. And we have Mother's Day, and it says, Mother's Day is a holiday honoring a families or individual a mother as well as motherhood, maternal con connections, a mother impact in society. It is observed on various days across the world, most notably in the months of March and May. The example, we send flowers to mom in honor of Mother Day. Then we have Labor Day, that is um, it's known as a federal holiday. It means in the United States that in that is observed on the first Monday in September in that place, but in our countries it is on May. And this one is to acknowledge and honor the movement as well as the laborious efforts and contribution to the country's progress and success. It is it's a four-day weekend when we're saying like. They are celebrating like that in the United States. Example, I wish you a very enjoyable and faithful Labor Day weekend. And then we have New Year's Eve, that is the last day of the year that is considered New Year's Eve, also known as All Year's Day or St. Sylvester's Day in various countries. So on December 21st, in the Gregorian calendar, New Year's Eve is presently celebrated in many countries uh, with nighttime celebration with people dance, eat, drink, and watch uh, all light fireworks. And the example says, on New Year's Eve, we will be throwing a party. So in this case, we have the most common celebrations or events that we celebrate 
uh, during the year. So now, when you need to, to talk about or we need to, to write about an event, what elements do we need to create um, uh, this description of the event? So now we are going to talk about how to write a description on an event. We are going to see what are the elements that we need to create that uh, reading part and how it is formed. Vamos a ver cómo eh, podemos nosotros escribir una descripción de un evento. ¿Qué elemento necesitamos? ¿Qué elemento vamos a incluir en esa descripción? So this description or this information is, um, or have three parts. We have the number one, that is the brainstorm. The by process. And the check. We're going to have three parts when we are trying to write a description of an event. First, we need to have the brainstorm because um, uh, we need to know what are the uh, elements or ideas that we are going to include in the description of this event. Then we need to write the, uh, the description, but in that case, we need to know what are the elements that we need to use for the writing process? And then we are going to check the information it is correct or something like that. For the brainstorm, we have different things. We're going to divide it like this. Brainstorm, that is the first part. And we are going to have it like this. First, we need to know why is this event important, significant, fun for you? That is like a question. Then, number two, date, place, time. Then, the number three, what activities happen there? Number four, sensory details. What did you see? A smell, taste, and hear. Para la primera parte del brainstorm, que es como la lluvia de ideas, donde nosotros vamos a sacar, ¿verdad? Eh, de manera desordenada las ideas que luego vamos a utilizar para escribir, tenemos estos cuatro partes. Primero, nos vamos a preguntar, why is this event important? Or why is this event significant? Or why is this event fun for you? ¿Por qué es importante, significativo o divertido para nosotros? Y tenemos que explicar, ¿verdad? En esta parte, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué lo sentimos así? Luego vamos a poner el tiempo, ¿verdad? El lugar, el momento en el que se llevó a cabo ese evento. What activities happened there? ¿Qué actividades se llevaron a cabo en ese evento? 
eh, puede que haya sido un cumpleaños, una celebración de aniversario, qué actividades se dieron en ese lugar. Then the sensory details, que son los detalles sensoriales, que vimos, que olimos, que probamos y que escuchamos en ese evento. Then we have the second part that is the bright. When we have all the information that we need for the, uh, the event, now we need to um, have an order of the ideas that we have in the brainstorm. We are uh, going to make something with that information. So in this case, it's bright. First, we have the introduction. And this one includes something interesting. And why this event is important fun to go. So in this case, we can say that it is like a festival or it is like um, a meeting that is going to happen um, in a different moment uh, in the year, but it's going to happen more than one uh, time. So in case, we need to talk about that uh, festival meeting uh, or something like that. And you need to say something interesting about that event because you need to um, have the attention of the people on the event and the event. And then you need to, to write what is um, important or fun to go to that event or that festival. So in that case, you can say, um, uh, we have a festival on Kukovic, for, for example. We have a festival on Kukovic and we can find a lot of activities that we can um, do. In that case, you're just going to mention the activities, the, the word activity, but you're not going to say what activities are because you need to um, make the video interested in the activities you are just going to mention and you are going to say there are a lot of activities on it of it and you can uh, have fun with your family because you are going to find um, some restaurants um, you're going to find a uh, music you're going to find and you can add the information that you need to, to say about the event then you need to make the description of the location, time, and date. Donde, cuando, y a qué horas, por ejemplo. Then you are going now, you are going to describe the activities that happen. Then you need to describe the sensory details here the smell, colors, sounds, and taste.
and then you need to uh, write the conclusion. And it says that you need to summarize why this event was worth attending and what you especially enjoyed. Also, the other part that we have for right is that you need to use past tense. Because in that case, you are explaining your, um, uh, your experience in that festival. So in that case, you need to write in past tense. Then we can use linking words. Uh, and we have here a list of these linking words that we can use when we are writing. The first one for sequencing ideas, We can use firstly, secondly, finally, then two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. Then for adding information. We can use an in addition and also giving a reason for this one we can use due to the fact because Then for contesting ideas, we have but despite the fact. And for giving a result, we can use therefore, and we can use so. So in that case, we can use um, this word to make uh, better the uh, writing process. Also, we can uh, have a useful uh, expression like every year the people ask, it, and that place we can uh, um, write a deep place uh, in which the festival is happening, celebrate, and we say what are they celebrating. Also, we can say people in Alex celebrate, the name of the celebration, it's a big celebration. Uh, Another one is uh, the name of the celebration, and we can say it's a big celebration. And we can explain what is this celebration about. 
this holiday is in, and we say the, the place. We can use the scripted words, and it says do not use bad words or generalities such as good, nice, bad, or beautiful. Those words are not like um, very good for your description because they are very simple and, and plain and very, very common. So in that case, you need to change that kind of words. Be specific and use the sensory descriptive words like adjectives. For example, I ate a good dinner or I devoured a steam in a hot cheese, still pepperoni pizza for dinner. In that case, it's more like interesting to read about that kind of thing. No simplemente vamos a decir me comí una pizza y ya. A mí eso no me llama la atención. Yo creo que a nadie le llama la atención saber que se comió una pizza. Pero si decimos, me comí una pizza que llevaba tres tipos diferentes de queso. Eh, la, eh, la masa era de esta forma, estos colores, estos sabores, estos, estos olores. A las personas les llama mucho la atención lo que logran imaginar a través de la descripción. Then we can provide a sensory detail like the smell that are in the air, the aroma of freshly brewed coffee, for example, when you feel the smell of coffee on the air. Then the sound, laughing people of lighting music, the sight, people dressed in colorful dresses, the touch, the texture of silky bags, so they uh, were too small, the taste, a sweet, sour, salty, bitter, hard, green, spousaline, fresh coconut juice, orange juice, or ice, Water. So in that case, you need to, to add more details to the description. And for the last part, that is the number three, the check. You need to do the following. First, we need to check sentences begin with capital letters. This one is uh, even in Spanish and in English that you need to, to check if you are writing capital letters at the beginning of the paragraph or at the beginning of the document. Because you know that it's a grammatical rule. And we're going to write it like this, capital letters. Then sentence have proper punctuation. That is another um, important thing that we need to, to check the punctuation. Spelling is shut. And there is subject verb agreement in each sentence. So in that case, eh, cuando nosotros revisamos nuestros escritos, nuestros trabajos, estos cuatro elementos tienen que ser los fundamentales. Primero que nuestras oraciones comiencen con letra mayúscula, eh, ya sea en los párrafos o el inicio de los documentos, que los nombres propios también vayan en eh, mayúsculas y cosas así. Acuérdense que en inglés es diferente porque los meses del año Los días también se escriben con capital letters. Luego, que las oraciones tengan la, la puntuación adecuada es muy importante para darnos a entender mejor. Spelling, que las palabras vayan bien escritas, que no nos hayamos, como decimos, comido una letra, sino que vayan completas. Y la última, there is a subject verb agreement. Esa es bien importante, que el sujeto 
y el verbo estén de acuerdo, ¿verdad? En cada oración. ¿Cómo así? Cuando tenemos eh, los pronombres, por ejemplo, he, she, it, que el verbo esté de acuerdo a la regla de la tercera persona, que se le agregue s, s y s, y que el verbo esté de acuerdo, ¿verdad? Con, con estas reglas. Si no lleva esas reglas, si no lo estamos escribiendo bien, entonces tendremos un error en esa parte. So now this is the uh, ending for this topic that is talking about events. And we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last day of this course. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, teacher. Tonight. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night.